Today I'd like to talk a little bit about topology optimization in a real world project. An engineer in our office broke a turn signal off his motorcycle and decided to use some topology optimization and this is what he came up with. It's a pretty slick, cool design. Um, I want to show how we got here. I'm going to reverse the, the, the go back to where it was originally and show you from the topology optimization tab. Go back to manage bodies and manage, topology, manage optimization features. You can tell it to auto add all recognized features. Things that it doesn't add in automatically, you can add in manually. Um, to, to just go through the, the list here, there's a keep in zone, which is the tube that lets the wire run into the, to the housing. Uh, the housing itself is a keep in. The, the air volume of the housing is a keep out. We don't want the apology optimization to be working in there. Same with the screw boss that's inside there. There's the attachment screw to the motorcycle. We want to be able to have access to that. We don't want anything to be in the way. And the boss, the, the, this turn signal actually fits into a little socket. Um, so there, you want to do make sure that there's nothing on the outside of this. The tube, since it's, it's supposed to be a tube, we want to make sure that there's a, a keep out zone that's, that's on the inside of that tube to, to keep topology optimization from doing anything inside the zone. And then of course there's the base itself and that's a fixed constraint. We don't want that moving around or doing anything. Come down here to manage load cases. Load case, there's really no load cases on this part other than gravity and um, uh, air resistance. Uh, if you think about a motorcycle going down the, down the road, uh, the air would be pushing against it this way. Um, he did set it to 10 pounds force, which is pretty high, uh, uh, which could account for some of the, the, the how it looks on the uh, in the end. Uh, last one I always check is the manage design constraints. And there are no design constraints in here. And I'll discuss those as I, as I go through the, the next part. So that if I reverse reverse the blank on this, you see that this is what it came up with. You kind of see in here the, the keep out zone that it, that it, that it um, honored for the screw to attach it to the, to the motorcycle. On the analysis tab, there are some checks you can run on here. So there's design validation for additive manufacturing. So I'm gonna do a wholly enclosed volume, check that body and Look at my checkmate here. It does check. It does. It, there, it is a wholly enclosed volume. It passed the test. There's no internal voids to this part. Another one I like to run on here is a minimum wall thickness. And tell it to calculate the thickness on there. This will run for a second or so. And then it tells you the areas that you're below your minimum wall thickness, which is set to 15 thou. Um, if I switch my, my shading here, you can see that a lot of these are just facets that are sitting on the surface. Um, there could be something that uh, you've got an extra facet that sits on top of uh, the surface here. That looks like there's, I don't know, a little bit of weirdness that's going on right here in these zones. Something to watch out for uh, when you're running topology optimization for sure. Uh, and uh, we'll see what this looks like in the next part. So again, he, he let, me, let me run optimization again. So on the part that I re-ran, I go down to topology optimization. I left all the constraints the same. I did do a, do a minor change of the way the, the screw attaches to the, to the motorcycle, um, uh, with approval, of course. Uh, under manage bodies, uh, oops, select the 34, optimization features. One thing I did do uh, is uh, I left all the, all the optimization features the same. And then under manage load cases, what I did with the extrude 17 is I dropped that down to a, to a little bit more reasonable value. It's still about 160 miles an hour, um, but that's all right. And then under uh, manage design constraints, I turned on material spreading. And then that material spreading uh, up to 100% tends to, to, to spread into strut-like structures. Uh, above 60, it tends to pr produce thin wall structures. So I'm a little bit in between that at uh, 90%. And... Uh, when, when that's all run, uh, uh, everything is ready to go for, for my managed bodies. I can assign materials. Again, it's just ABS. Managed load cases, I can turn on gravity. You can also turn on the global temperature. So if it's in a hot environment or a really cold environment, you can, you can uh, adjust for that. And set up optimization. This is where you're going to actually start running the optimization. So uh, this little slider here. Uh, does adjust how slow or fine it is so down here it's fast but uh, also pretty coarse then up here at the other end it's uh, very fine but also takes a long time it's going to take some time to, to, to get used to this this uh, slider here 
and how much it's going to take to run your optimization. You tell it to, to estimate optimization parameters. And it goes through, it tells me that, uh, that uh, between 0.33 and 0.05 pounds mass. So I set a mass target of 0 0.06, 0 0.06 rather. And I tell it to run optimization. It takes me over to this uh, uh, convergent window and uh, goes through with a log file that tells you what it's doing. It's initializing, and you'll see meshing, you know, it'll be doing a few other things here, and you'll see the bars uh, do their thing. Uh, I'm going to cut out a lot of this. Um, because it does just take a lot of time to run. And at the end of the convergence, this is what I ended up with. Sorry if my voice is cracking a little bit. I'm just getting over a cold here. So, <clears throat> looks uh, much, well, I don't know, cleaner. It looks a lot cooler, for sure. Uh, uh, it's got a lot of, lot more thin, thin wall structures. I'll go back to my analysis, holding and close volume, do a check on that. It does pass. And then I'm going to do my wall thickness check again, have it calculate that. Again, I've got the, the sharp features down here, but uh, I still have a few few facets out here on the ends that I should probably take a look at. Um, but uh, for now, I'm going to let it roll, uh, let, it, let it run. I'm going to take a look at uh, how the facets are all lining up in here. So switch this to... Uh, Oh, oops. Turn on the facet edges. And you see a cool, a cool view of how this is all put together. If I take a look at my maximum, uh, maximum displacement, maximum stress, take a look at displacement first. Maximum displacement, uh, very small. Maximum stress, uh, again, very small. So I can turn those on to see the heat maps. Turn off my uh, faceting on there. This also still has um, almost like little notches where the, the, the extrude came out. Uh, the, 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 the keep out area came out. One of the things I did is I used my reverse engineering tab here to do some uh, cleanup. Uh, this this little step here, I probably could have gone back and, and rerun the optimization on it to just kind of make this more of a a tubular strut instead of having it have that step in it. It still has plenty of room to get a screw inside the inside the screw hole. Uh, again, with uh, with authorization from the guy who uh, who uh, wants to put this on his motorcycle, uh, was able to clean this up using my reverse engineering tools uh, shown here.